Hello family, we thank God for another day. We give him honour and adoration for all he's done for us and all he continues to do. Today I'm going to read John chapter 6 from verse 48 to 58. I am the bread of life, the living bread which gives and sustains life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down out of heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, believes in me, accepts me as saviour, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, body. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I assure you and will solemnly say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, unless you believe in me as Saviour, and believe in the saving power of my blood, which will be shed for you. You do not have life in yourselves. This one, the one who eats my flesh, and drinks my blood, believes in me, accepts me as Saviour, has eternal life, that is, now possesses it, and I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. For my flesh... Please take note of this, is true spiritual food, and my blood is true spiritual drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, believes in me, accepts me as saviour, remains in me, and I in the same way remain in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, even so the one who feeds on me, believes in me, accepts me as saviour, will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down. Out of heaven, it is not like the manna that our fathers ate and they eventually died. The one who eats this bread, believes in me, accepts me as saviour, will live forever. Today, I want to share with you about the power of the Holy Communion. Yesterday, we looked at how Jesus, before on the night that he was betrayed, broke bread and basically said to that um, his disciples, that they were to eat of the bread of his body and drink of the cup, which represents his new covenant in remembrance of him. In the scripture that I've read now, it goes on to explain even further why Jesus instituted what we now come, have come to know as the Holy Communion. He made it clear that he, Jesus, is the bread of life, that it was important that the people will eat of his um, body and drink of his blood. And he basically made them understand that the reason why it was important for them to do so is because it is spiritual food. And so today, even as I come to bring this message, I've had, I really want to Um, appeal to you that I'm going to share some of the benefits that we get as a people of faith when we have communion. Often we do communion based on the word that I'd even shared yesterday where Jesus said we were to do so in remembrance of him that when we do so we signify his death which is true but the picture that God gave me is this that imagine that you have a baby who's been born, maybe it's only a few months, when the baby is fed every day, the parents or the mother expects that that child will receive nourishment from the food that they're receiving. They expect that because the child receives nourishment, the minerals, the vitamins, the proteins, and you name it, that child will grow. There will be a physical evident, um, a growth in that child. And so if that child is maybe six months and they've been fed continuously for a year and that child's body is not growing, they've not gotten to the point where they can crawl and so on and so forth, then there will be an indication that something is not right. Because when we eat food, we have an expectation that not only will it satisfy our hunger, when we drink, we have an expectation that not only will it satisfy our thirst, but that it will do some other things in our body. For example, when we drink, we expect that it means that we're not going to be dehydrated. We expect that the water will flush out um, certain toxins and things out of our body. 
In the same way, when we come to have communion, God really gave me a conviction that most times there's so many benefits we can get from the communion. But when we have it, we do not have it with expectation that those other benefits in the food, the spiritual food that Jesus has told us is the Holy Communion. Because we do not have an expectation, we just go through the motions and we do not see anything happen. For some of us, maybe we've even experienced um, healing as a result of the communion. Or we may have heard that the most that people talk about as far as the benefits of the communion is, is in relation to healing. But today I want to share with you that there's more that we can get from the communion other than healing. Because fundamentally the communion is spiritual food. And so what are some of the benefits that we can get from the communion? I'm going to make references to a few scriptures. I will not read them, but I would want you to make time to read it yourself. One, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Why? Because it cleanses us from all sin. So when we have the blood of Jesus, we expect that we'll have cleansing from sin. In, in, we can read that in 1 John 1, 7. We overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus and by the word of his testimony, which is recorded in Revelations 12, 1, 11. When the blood of Jesus gives us redemption, we receive redemption and forgiveness of our sins, Ephesians 1, 7. The blood of Jesus makes peace between us and God, Colossians 1, 20. The blood of Jesus draws us near to God, Ephesians 6, 4. And it gives us access to the throne room of God, Hebrews 10, 9. The blood of Jesus gives us eternal redemption, Hebrews 9, 12. So because we come to Jesus, we accept him as Lord and Savior, he cleanses us. We cannot therefore continually walk thinking that we're going to lose our salvation overnight, that nothing has taken place in our lives. When we think of the body of Christ, the Bible makes us understand that it gives us sanctification in Hebrews 10, 10. We also realize that the um, body of Christ gives us eternal life. And that was what Jesus was saying to them, even when he told them that um, his body and his blood is spiritual food. The blood of Jesus um, cleanses us, as I've already mentioned. And we are to remember that Jesus himself is described as the word of God, Revelations 19, 13. And these are just a few of the things that I thought I would bring to your attention today, as far as the blood of Jesus and the power in the body of Christ is concerned. So just as you would eat food, expecting that you would maybe get folic acid, um, vitamins, you would get minerals, you would get protein and all of these things. When we come to God and to have that Holy Communion, we are to remember that all these different things that I've just mentioned is accessible to us and we should be expecting to see that manifest in our spirits, in our bodies, because the blood of Jesus, for example, causes us to overcome the enemy. Therefore, it's suggestive of the fact that if I am perhaps not just in pain, but I know that there's something I'm battling spiritually, maybe there's an attack in my body, maybe there's a covenant that speaks against my life, maybe there's something that the enemy has planted in my body. When I come to have that communion, I should be expectant of the fact that whatever that thing is must bow its knee. I must overcome it because of the power and the attributes in the blood of Jesus and in the body of Christ. But the conviction that I had yesterday was that God was laying on my heart is that many a times we do not see the miraculous power in the body and in the blood because we come to Holy Communion sometimes with this mindset that, oh, we're just remembering Jesus. Sometimes we come to have Holy Communion with this notion that, oh, we're just going through the motions. I'm just drinking some wine or some um, non-alcoholic drink. I'm just drinking, eating some bread and that's it. But as a people of faith, everything we do, if we're going to see the manifestation of the power of God, of the power in the spiritual food that Jesus himself gives to us, we need to have expectation. And so I've heard of people share testimonies of how 
one particular testimony I had of a lady who had had cancer, ovarian cancer. Her fallopian tubes had been taken out and all manner of things. And she had been told that she would never be able to have a child be, um, again. While she was going through the treatments and the subsequent years and everything, she was trusting God that God would supernaturally heal her um, and not that she would not necessarily have to have artificial insemination in order for her to have a child of her own. Thank God. She says that they kept holding on to the word of God. Her pastor kept saying words of faith and saying that, you know, God will give them restoration and so on. Long story short, at some point, by the grace and the power of God, God gave her new tubes. Eventually, at some point, she shares about how her pastor had said to her that they were to have communion herself and her husband regularly. They started having communion over a period of time in their own home and over months and things like that. And eventually, long story short, God did a miracle. She... Um, her, her tubes was miraculously, she regained it. God created a new one, gave her a new one. Um, miraculously, she conceived and um, gave birth to a child. And at the time, this person was sharing their testimony. They had um, a child, a toddler. And they obviously attributed to the power of God and um, the fact that, you know, they, the pastor has spoken words of life and has stood with them in faith and they had done the communion and so on. I've heard other people share various testimonies about how God completely healed them, you know, because of the communion. But I think that what I want to, us to take from this today is that the communion doesn't just give, give us access to the miraculous healing of God. He can do so much more, so, so much more. As I say, you know, for some of us, we may come from backgrounds where we know that um, people um, consulting um, mediums and fetishes and so on is very prevalent. And we also know that the enemy sometimes has a way of mimicking or counterfeiting, if you like, the very um, things that are, are holy and righteous and so on. And some of these people who go and consult some of these um, fetishes and so on would go and will be given a concoction of some sort. And when they take those concoctions, do you know that they take it in faith with confident assurance that whatever it is that the person who gave them co the concoction said um, that thing will do, will, it, will, it will happen. And sometimes they're given all sorts, but we do know that the devil obviously doesn't give anything for free. He doesn't give it any good thing. And some of these people end up with all manner of demons and compli complex situations and so on. But the point is this, that if a person can go and be given a concoction and have so much faith in that concoction, why should we not have even greater faith in what the blood of Jesus, the body of Christ, which he gave to you and I? Because sometimes, you know what, the enemy just knows that there is power in the blood of Jesus. He knows it. And that's why even we do know for some of us who have heard of people who dabble in witchcraft and so on and so forth, they do all these um, hideous sacrifices and, and so on. Because they recognize that there's power in the blood and, and so on. But we have power in the blood of Jesus and in the body of Christ. So today, I just really want to encourage you. Um, I would read a scripture um, tomorrow because I think I, I, I've not got enough time to conclude this message. So I will carry on with this message tomorrow. But I would really want to encourage you that let God begin to give you a whole new mindset as far as the Holy Communion is concerned. Because if we do and we approach it, bearing in mind it is spiritual food and there's so much in there for us, I believe that we'll begin to see amazing miracles and testimonies come about because of the Holy Communion. In closing, I'm going to go over our memory verse, Romans 10, 9. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority and majesty as God, and believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. The Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And um, I will conclude this message about the Holy Communion tomorrow. I look forward to sharing with you in Jesus name. Amen.